If a suffering Jew of the Holocaust came knocking on your door asking for help, what would you do? Maria Sarkoska provided a home for Jews to hide in as they passed through, no matter if she knew them or not. A Polish farmer from the village of St. Marie murdered a Jew for the sole purpose of stealing his belongings. Food, shelter, and medical care, underground organizations. These are a few of the many examples of what bystanders did to help. However, as many bystanders as there were that helped, there were just as many who took advantage of the Jews. Anti-Semitism, the fear of death, the need for money, or the desire to be accepted in the community caused many Polish bystanders to work alongside the Nazis in the destruction of the Jewish community. To save a Jew, people had to put themselves at risk, and they had to ask themselves if this risk was worth it. Anti-Semitism, defined as extreme hostility towards Jews, was becoming an increasing problem throughout the 1920s and 1930s, especially in Poland. During these years, Poland was home to the highest number of Jewish citizens throughout all of Europe and thus the central location for industrial killing during the Holocaust. The Jewish community often had a difficult time fitting into the Polish Catholic population. Unlike in Western Europe, Jews often spoke a different language, such as Yiddish, dressed, ate, and socialized differently. Many Poles considered Jews outsiders who worked and lived only within their Jewish community. Polish Jews were more identifiable than more assimilated Jews in Western Europe. Being able to differentiate a Jew from a Pole made the Nazis' job easier but it also made it harder for the Poles to help the Jews without being cut. Many believe that Polish bystanders did not do enough to help the Jews. We must consider the fears of the Poles who wanted to help a suffering Jew but were afraid of the consequences if discovered. If a Pole was caught helping a Jew, it was likely both would be killed. A law was issued stating that anyone caught helping a Jew would face immediate death to himself and the rest of their family. Incestri Baron Yek and his wife were caught hiding Jews. Without questioning, they were immediately taken to the barn and forced to watch their children shot before Nazi guns turned on themselves. The Germans did not face them as they killed a Pole because they were considered undesirable as well, just not as undesirable as a Jew. It was a big risk if one chose to help a Jew, but if lucky, it could lead to high reward. No matter the size of the act, any effort put towards helping Jews could save a life. Elizabeth Shondorovska sheltered Jews, produced false documents, and supplied food and clothing so the chances of survival were greater. Eugenia Svital, a doctor, provided medical care for Jews who had been attacked brutally as they were thrown out of their small towns. Jan Arkivskieski spied on the Germans as they worked with an underground organization fighting for the freedom of the Jews. From underground organizations such as the Jewish Fighting Organization, working with the Jews within the Warsaw Ghetto to create an uprising, to a piece of bread given to a starving Jew, no act was too small. For some Poles, rescuing became a highly valued activity. They wanted to do what they could to fight the common enemy, the Germans. They wanted to aid the suffering people. Their compassion and pity were taking over their senses, all while they were expecting nothing in return. There is no one type of stereotypical rescuer. Each rescuer holds different values, political ideals, and values of friendship. There are Poles who chose to help their good friends. There are also Poles who turned their Jewish friends away, often because they feared for their safety. More than half of the Jewish survivors saved by bystanders were protected by random strangers. As afraid as they were, the honorable rescuers asked for nothing in return. They felt prompted by Jewish neediness. They knew they had to do something. It was their way of life. Liking a Jew and helping a Jew did not go hand in hand. It was related to one's moral standards, beliefs, and abilities. When asked about their efforts to help a Jew, many Poles minimized their actions because to them, they were not doing anything special. It was done without second consideration. Along with the Poles who worked to save the Jews, there were Poles who reported Jews to the Nazis. There were Poles who feared for their life, Poles who needed money during the wartime crisis, and Poles who simply hated Jews. These Poles took advantage of the suffering Jews for their personal gain. One Pole agreed to house Jews if in return they paid him in jewelry and money. Once it was all received, he told them they had to leave because it was dangerous for the Jews to be in his home. The Pole then informed Nazi authorities about where the Jews were hiding. Once found, they were immediately shot. A Polish farmer named Sienkiewicz murdered the Jews he was sheltering once they ran out of money. Groups of Poles would go on raids, hunting down hiding Jews simply to murder them and steal their belongings. In one instance, the entirety of a Jewish population in Yedwabne, a small Polish town, were betrayed by their neighbors. The Poles chose to gather all the Jews within the town, bring them to the city center, and torment them. Once the tormenting had ended, they marched them over to the barn, locked them in, and set the barn on fire. The Polish citizens took charge while the Germans watched. Society had fallen apart. These raids and murders were primarily committed by the poor who had taken advantage of the chaos to advance their own positions. Many others were motivated by anti-Semitism and the desire to destroy the Jewish population. Poles mocked the Jews, 
forced them to mark like soldiers. Jews were called names such as Jew boy. One survivor even felt as if Jewish children were being hunted. Nazi propaganda was also an important contributing factor. Nazis had published posters with movies displaying Jews as evil, ugly, dangerous, disease ridden They were accused of studying the war and communism. There was so much hatred towards the Jewish community. The non-Jewish felt fear for what would happen to them if they chose to help. This led to many bystanders choosing not to help and instead protecting themselves. Even though Poland was home to the highest percent of Jews, we cannot forget about the other countries in Europe that were home to Jews and the influence of Hitler's regime. The Christian populations of Denmark, Holland, and Italy worked to protect their Jewish neighbors. In Denmark, the Danish government refused to participate in the implementation of the final solution. They secretly evacuated all their Jewish residences to Sweden, a neutral country, via boat before they could be deported to concentration camps. In Holland, many citizens protested the Germans as they took power. They were unable to hold off Nazis' invasion. However, many of the citizens worked within the Dutch underground. They disguised Jews as Christians and saved many lives. In Italy, Prime Minister Mussolini allied with Germany. However, this did not prevent the Italian citizens from working to protect the Jewish community. They were in the process of sheltering 50,000 Italian and French Jews when Mussolini lost his power. The Germans then invaded. Almost all Italian Jews were sent to the Auschwitz gas chambers. Individual people and entire communities worked to save Jewish communities. All while individual people and entire communities worked to destroy Jewish communities. The number of Jews that survived the Holocaust is not an accurate representation of how many Poles worked to save the Jews. Even after the war, those who were known for helping Jews were persecuted by their communities. Vajek, a young Pole who never turned away a suffering Jew during the war, was murdered by an illegal Polish anti-Semitic underground group once they figured out what he had done. Each bystander was influenced in different ways, to help or to not help a Jew. Each rescuer held different values, economic positions, and values of friendship, leading them to save a life. Then there were those who killed Jews because of fear, their hatred of Jews, or their need to survive. Sofia Bruskovich, despite her own poverty, housed 13 Jewish people during the Holocaust, saving 13 lives. Antoni Sien assembled a group of Poles who murdered 28 Jews and then stole their belongings. So, what would you have done?